Rube's observations brought to you by Bradford White Water Heaters. Where do you start with this catastrophe? Uh, we'll start with the Eagles defense, uh, which, look, they've had their issues the last month and a half or so. Uh, but this was a complete meltdown against a team that's got one of the worst offenses in the NFL. The Cards averaged 18 points per game. They scored 35, and they scored on their last four possessions, all four possessions in the second half on touchdown drives longer than 70 yards. Uh, the Eagles just could not stop them. That's a terrible roster. It's a terrible team. They're trying to lose. They're trying to get the number one pick, and they embarrassed the Eagles. And this Eagles defense not that long ago was pretty good. They're number six defense in the NFL through week seven. Uh, they just allowed a Cards team averaging 18 points to score 29 in the second half. It's one of the worst second halves in Eagles history. The Cards ran 38 plays in the second half. 19 of those plays went for first downs. So half their plays in the second half were first downs. That's impossible. I'm going to guess that's never happened in the history of the NFL. And if you don't believe me, you can look it up and prove me wrong. But I guess the irony is that Jonathan Gannon did to the Eagles what the Chiefs did to Jonathan Gannon. Basically a perfect second half that cost the Eagles a win. I think the most alarming thing about this team is its inability to protect the lead. Um, there's been nine games this year where they've built a double-digit lead. They were up 15 today. They were up 17 last week against the Giants, and they had to hold on in the final seconds with the Keeley Ringo interception. They can't protect the lead. Out of those nine games, only two wound up as 10-point wins. So they've had nine games where they've been up 10, and only two that they've won by 10, and three that they've lost. So when the 2023 Eagles are up by double digits at any point in the game, they're more likely to lose than to win by 10 or more points. You just have to wonder what's inside, what's happening here. Is is this the right coaching staff? Is this the right personnel? Is this the right play calling? Yeah, I think everything comes into question. It might not be fair, but it makes you wonder about the team's heart. How are they built? Because after this performance, you really have to wonder. This was as bad as anything I've ever seen. I've been doing this a long, long time. For a team that was in a Super Bowl last year, it was 10-1, and one, just a few weeks ago to get beat on their own field by one of the worst teams in football when they were up 15 in the third quarter. It's unconscionable. It can't happen. And that leads, I guess, to our final observation, which is Nick Sirianni. Look, he's not going to get fired, even if the Eagles lose to the Giants and then get killed in the, in the wild card game, which honestly, I don't have a lot of confidence. I don't have a lot of faith in this team to be any good team, any playoff team, especially looks like it'll probably be on the road now. His job is safe. His job is safe. He's not going anywhere. Not now. But it does make you wonder. It does make you wonder a little bit. This is as bad as it's been under Nick. I mean, they're one in four since they were 10 and one. And this is three straight weeks where they've blown a big lead. It makes you wonder about his ability to still connect with his team. He's big on culture. Is that culture still here? His core values, are they still getting through to the players? Because there's something really, really wrong with the product that this football team is putting out there. This is the biggest challenge he's faced since he's been here. And I'm really curious to see how he handles it.